Hello everyone, my name is E-Dogs and welcome back to this review channel. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Tobot Galaxy Detectives Commander Universe. If you do not know anything about the show, I'll give you a brief rundown. There is a princess who has the six galaxy weapons, if you will. They're being chased by a villain named Pulsar. In a last ditch effort, she drops the six weapons on Earth. Uh, separating them into six different locations where Tyler here discovers one of those six galaxy weapons which turns all of his action figures into real uh, Tobots. That's what they call the called Tobots. And he can bring them to life with this galaxy weapon and they can transform from RC mode or toy mode uh, or alt mode into uh, their robot mode to fight the, the villains. So, with that further ado, let's get into the box. Now, this is the Galaxy Detective Commander Universe version. This is the English version, where the South Korean version, uh, his name is Great Admiral in that show. Uh, the only difference between this and the South Korean version is obviously the uh, the wording, the the language on the box. So we have Tobots over here. We have four and up. Commander Universe going down this way. Uh, we have the Ultimo down here. We have Taylor with his galaxy weapon there. Uh, the toy and the cartoon is provided by a company called Young Toys. Over here in this little corner it says animal type toki commander universe go we'll get into that in a second uh same thing on this side we have tobots over here in this left hand corner and then you have uh young toys on the right hand side corner over there the back of the box we have the most powerful in the universe tobot galaxy detectives um we'll get into this later uh, we have um, uh, we have another picture over here in his robot mode on that side. We have this guy over here. His name is Tankman, but we'll get into that when we get, when we have the figure in hand. And then we have this little section. Now this is the way my box came with this big old hole in it. On the bottom of the box it says Galaxy Detective Invincible. And on this side uh, we have him in his robot mode. Uh, Young Toys is on the bottom right hand corner this time. You have Commander of the Universe on the left. And um, Tobot on the top. Uh, don't let anybody um, three years or younger uh, try to eat it. Please don't leave it on the floor. And try not to let somebody swallow these pieces. So there you go. For the boxes. So first up, we are going to do accessories first, so we can get into it. So this is his uh, backpack, right? It frictions on. You have these two holes here, and it swings into place. Uh, also, there are some friction clips on the inside. So we have some male friction clips, and then on the body, there's a female uh, portion on it, and it just clicks into place uh, very solidly. Uh, as you can see, it's mostly red. We have some white here for the uh, the flight uh, flight deck. We have a little bit of uh, yellow here uh, for the medium on the bridge. We have some black on the ends here, here, and here. It's a decoration. It's like a, a brick decoration kind of deal or a tile type of de uh, decoration for this black. But... We'll add this later. The bridge is up here. The, uh, the flight deck is there. So we're going to leave that there. Next is this shield. It has two purposes. It can be clamped on either side of the robot. You put it on the right hand side, you put it on the left hand side, or vice versa. And then it has two friction clips friction clip here and here. And then there's two more on the outside for the oak mold. And the same thing as these uh, tiles on, like, in these black areas have these tiles here to give it a little bit more detail. 
That's what it looks like there for underneath. Put that down. And last but not least, we have this. This is the toe key. And this is what locks, I should say, unlocks the robot from his vehicle mode into uh, the robot mode. And it's in a shape of a Chinese flying dragon, which is a legendary creature that flies amongst the clouds in Chinese mythology. The dragon represents good luck, strength, and health. So this has two other, uh, other purposes. It doesn't show you in the instructions how to get to this. You kind of have to figure it out for yourself. Uh, but it's a very nice piece. I mean, you can just have this by itself, you know, flying around your room or something like that. Um, but it's same color, red. We have a little bit more. We have yellow. We have like a gray here. Not too dark, but it's a nice gray for like the back ends of the leg. We have some yellow on the feet. Um... The eyes are like a cayenne blue type of color. Let me see if I can get it in there. They're cayenne blue. The jaw has the same color as the, the feet, but it's a little bit much lighter gray. A uh, little bit of yellow on, under the chin. And we have some more yellow for the scales underneath his neck, his belly. Uh, we have some on the tail. And the same thing is on the other side. Now this is a little bit tricky. The transformation for this is a little bit tricky, but he turns into three different things. And we'll get back to that in a second. So we're going to bring in the frigga. This is this is what you get in the package. Bring this down a little bit. Now the figure stands about maybe 13 inches tall. It weighs a little bit more than two pounds. And uh, we're just going to have to put them together first. So we take this piece right here. You can kind of see the bridge in white there. And in the white over here. And we're just going to turn them around real quick. And then there's this piece right here. This piece comes out. And you can see these two nubs. There's a nub on this side, and there's a nub on that side, and there's more friction clips on the back of here that plugs into the back. And this friction on, sometimes it does come off. It's not really solid, solid, but it does what it needs to do. Right, so now it's on, and it does this. That's the function of it. Now there is another piece that pops off here. We'll get to that in a second, you'll, you'll see that. So this clamps on, plugs into place, and it stays there. Now it does wiggle, it does unplug, as you can see there, but it will hold into place if you're not moving it around. Another thing we can do is this shield let me show you that so you have these two nubs here you got thing right here you got a thing right there they're on the same side uh you can pick and choose which side you want and the arm comes out like that we'll get into that in a second all right and it's plugged on there's no clicks for you know to let you know it's a, like a solid connection it will sit there, but once you stop messing around with it, it will fall off. Uh, this we'll get into in a second. Right, so we're gonna take this off because it's gonna fall off anyway. We'll get back to that. So, this comes into place next. This is the, uh, the Toki. In the show, you see this first. And then you see the robot second, and then there's a uh, there's an, uh, you see the Oatmo second, and then you see the robot mode. So I have to skip over. And how you get there is pretty simple. So you, all you have to do here is you have to flip the tail in, like so. It has to be this way. Bring this back, like so. Before you do anything other 
then uh, uh, any more than that, you need to make sure the legs are in place. Slip the feet back, bringing the legs forward. You have to bring them forward because it, it fits into a groove like this. Same thing on the other side, bring the feet back, bring the lower leg forward, and it's gonna fit in this groove here. See this groove here, it's gonna fit in here like that. Uh, same thing for the top. Just push this up. Right, so uh, we do have to arrange some stuff real quick. So we need to make sure that these great pieces are on this side. So we just got to turn this around. If you need more room, just bring this tail out. Uh, yep. Like that should be like this. Just want to match that on the other side. Do the same thing for the top. Like that. So it should be like this. And you want to bring this up. Like that. Bring this head down. Like so. And everything should be just like this. So all the feet should be pointing this way. Same thing on the other side. And this is going to clamp into place. This is going to clamp into the uh, friction clip that's in this chest. And that's going to complete the look. So we're going to bring this arm up. clips into place and now you have the chest of the the robot done and that's how it looks that's how it's supposed to look now we're gonna bring in one more accessory this is his hydro sword same color as the robot which is red we have a little bit of yellow on the edge of the back of the sword we have the the same gunmetal grayish color for the hilt. And you can put this on the other side, it doesn't really matter. So we're gonna bring this up. You just slide this in here. There's no, uh, like, you know, like a, um, how you say, uh, uh, like a three millimeter peg or anything like that, or a slot that this falls into. It just goes into this hand. It's not really sturdy or at all, but it looks like that. This is what the sword looks like this way. I really like the sword. This sword is crazy. Uh, but on this side, we have these uh, three millimeter pegs on this side. And that is for the oak mode once we get into it. So there it is from this side. There it is from that side. Uh, the backpack came undone. Here it is from the back. Here it is from this side. Now, to give you a comparison, we only have a few. So, we're going to bring in Unicron. Let's uh, raise this up so we can figure out what that looks like. And uh, we're going to bring it in six shot. So you kind of get an idea. Sorry for the shaky camera. So you kind of give an idea how tall he is. I do have a uh, Scorpinox in the box. So unofficially, the that's probably the tallest in my collection, but uh, Unicron is what I have on display. I just give them time. So we're gonna get this out of here. In the show, they have uh, attacks that they use during the show. One attack is called Quantum Fist. You could use either fist to do that. Uh, there's something called Roaring Whirlwind, 
where he takes the sword and he spins it in a circle and he can create either a whirlpool attack or uh, or a tornado attack when he's on land. Uh, it's pretty good. It's pretty good. It's pretty good. It's pretty good. Now, for articulation, he is very limited, but you can get him in certain poses. I'm just going to show you the articulation first. We'll come back to the sword in a second. So, there's no rotation at the shoulder. It does not turn this way. As you can see, it is locked into place. And I'm going to show you the, the design that they went with. Um, this is for the transformation into the alt mode, which we're about to get into in a second. So you can see there's nothing here that allows you to turn uh, 360 degrees on the arm. But you can go all the way up out here. If you need to, you can bring the lower arm out like that. So if you wanted to, you can bring the sword in. Bring the sword in one more time. And you kind of have like that. We'll, we'll leave that there in a second. Uh, as for the lower portion of the arm, at the elbow, it only goes about that far. That's it. That's all you're going to get. It goes about that, that far backwards. And you can see the detail. This one says uh, zero 01 on this side with this same gunmetal grayish type of color. That's all you're going to get. That's all you're going to get. So, so we're going to move that forward like that. Or maybe he's, maybe he's winding up. For the swing, you never know. This piece right here, these side skirts, they're in the way. To get them out of the way, you just kind of open these up a little bit. You bring these open, and you can get the leg all the way out, like so. Uh, going forward, it's a little tricky. You got to go out this far. That's all you're going to get. The knee is about that far. So if you wanted to, you could bring it out like that on the thigh. We'll leave that there. Same thing on the other side. You got to bring this piece out, bring this up. And again, you got to bring this arm up just to get it out of the way. If you want the leg to go backwards, you're not going to get much it's just because it's going to bring it to the back of the, uh, the backpack. But uh, if you took this off, you can definitely get this bottom leg to flip all the way back. Okay, so we're gonna just want to adjust some stuff real quick. Right, you can have these panels up or down. I had them in a up position for some odd reason. And uh, what you gotta do, you gotta, you gotta find. See, I wish that arm can turn because I can actually do something with that. Another thing is his head does not turn at all. Uh, you can get it to go up a little bit like that if he's looking up. He still has the uh, cayenne blue eyes. You have the white face on there, but it doesn't look left. It doesn't look right. It's actually, uh, it's not glued, but it's actually one piece on a table that rotates backwards. So there's no left or right movement there. So you could have something like this. That's the best I can do with posability. It's very limited. Uh, if they have bicep swivels and thigh swivels, you, um, I understand that the you know there's no waist swivel. A lot of figures don't have waist swivel, but they still have those other pieces that give you a more dynamic uh, posability. So you could do this, or you can you know come up with something your own. But yeah. 
The ratchets are nice and solid. Let's get this sword out of his hand because we are going to start the transformation. All right, so to transform this, we need to do one thing. We need to take the tow key out of here first. And we want to bring down these yellow things next. Uh, you can push the head back before we do. Let me see if I can get a close up of his face. That's what it looks like. We have a little bit of yellow on the collar of the helmet. We have some yellow on the top of the helmet. The head crest goes all the way back. We have this thing, not sure exactly what that is, but we have this yellow thing on the top of the helmet. Uh, painted in yellow. So you take this piece right here, you flip this back, take the head, goes all the way back. That's it. That's all you got to do. The arms. You take the lower arm, bring it up like that. Take the hands. The hands do move in and out. They're painted in white. That's all you're going to get there. So you can leave it open or you have them closed. It doesn't really matter. And there's a cavity for the hands right here. So you just flip this in the cavity. Same thing on the other side. Straighten this up. Bring the arm up. Again, you leave it open or closed with the fist. Just bring this in. It's going to disappear. Right. So now we take these panels. Bring it up like that. Bring it up like that. Bring it up on the shoulder like so. And you want to bring it down on an angle like this, like that, till you get this. Same thing on the other side. Bring this all the way up. Like that. So everything should be plugged into place. If it's not, you can just do it quick. So now everything is plugged into place. Next is the legs. Let's tackle the legs. So you want to bring out and you want to bring it down. Now, when you bring this out, this is going to clip into place. And you bring this down, it's going to clip into place. You do, all you need to do is give it a, a, no, a nice tap and it will unlock itself. But it's in the lock position now. Same thing on this side. Bring this out bring this down uh there's more clip systems here you have the male portion on this side and you have the female portion on that side just bring them together and they should click into place just like that and it's going to stay like that uh the wings you can bring these out until you get to this angle or whatever you want to do this is the way i do it same thing on the opposite side bring this out that's too far. Let's bring this out. That's too far. That's about right. The backpack. Let's start the backpack. So we're going to bring this back. <clears throat> we're going to start here. We want to bring this panel back because it's clipped into place. So that's going to unfurl like so. And that's going to plug in. At these two points, where are they? There's two points where it plugs in. It's on the either side of these where it plugs in. And down here. Take these pieces right here, bring these up. Bring these up. Make sure you, this head is disappeared. Sorry. So you bring this all the way back. And these, these pieces right here are going to friction into place. Right? But before we do, we have to tackle the feet, take the feet, bring them all the way back, take this feet, bring this all the way back, like so, they're going to clip into place, and there's two more female uh, clips here, and the male clips are underneath that backpack. 
So bring this down, it's gonna friction over, just give it a good squeeze, and we're almost there. So we're gonna set this down real quick. Now for this piece, right here, we're gonna save last. Mix. We have the shield and we have the sword. So you turn it upside down, and the way to do this is we have the two holes down here. You have two holes back this way, and it points this way. So it kind of looks like a, uh, a guitar, like an electric guitar type of deal. Right? So it's going to look like this. Right? Opposite side, it's going to look like this. And what we do here is we're going to clamp it into place. So it needs to point this way. So you going in like this. There's two male clips here, one here, one there. And uh, I don't think there's any more. It's only two. So you just put that through here, give it a squeeze. And that is it for the belly of the ship. You can kind of see the sword is sticking out the back, but I don't think that uh, really matters. You really can't see it. So you have that part. Now this is a little tricky. This is gonna get a little tricky. Uh, to do so what we need is to bring this out like so and we need to make these brown portion of the back of the legs we need it to face a certain way so we bring this up so we need the space and we need to bring we need to have them pointing this way point them that way uh, same thing with the top uh, let's see how we're going to do that. So you, you can, ch you can check to see if you got it right. This is the, this is the way you know you got it right. So you want to bring this around, uh, like that, like this. But that might be... That might be wrong. I might be getting lost, but I'm going to get it. Right. So it should be something like this. Right. Like that. So make sure you did the same thing on that side. And this is going to plug in. Right. So to do that, the easiest way to do that, you take this panel that we just now put on. Now, you can do the chest piece second before putting this on. And what this is going to do, this is going to friction in between these two things here. Let's see if I can get it on camera. So there's a, a nub here, right here where my thumb is. And there's a nub there, you can see in the light right there where my thumb is. And they're going to pop into this circle and that circle. Let me just make some adjustments because I don't think this is actually right, right? Okay, so now I think we got it set up the way we want it. Something like this. Right, so just like this, you're going to friction into place. We got it on the first try. Just bring up the, the head a little bit. Now you can open the mouth if you want to. It's your prerogative. Now he turns it into what they call a nautical figurehead, which is a carved wooden decoration found at the name or roll of a ship. They were prominent between 
the 16th and 20th century and throughout modern ships. So that's what it looks like right here. Uh, in the perilous life of an ocean going ship, figureheads embody the spirit of the vessel offering the crew protection from the harsh seas and safeguarding their homeward journey. So this means something uh, to protect the, the people that's on the ship from rough uh, weather, if you will. And that's what it looks like. You have your nice little spaceship kind of give you the side view. You can see all these details on the side. Very nice. You have the old two over here. Not exactly sure what that is. You have these little circles. Don't know what those are. Um, intakes, maybe. Uh, you have the engines in the back. You have one, two, uh, four here. That's six. I'm not sure if these are engine ports or anything like that. Uh, do you have another four there? So you got ten, ten engines in total. Same thing on the other side. Uh, this one says... Does this says O1? Oh, no, this says O2 too. And you still have the same design on this side as well. Uh, going up the side. Here it is from the top view. We have the... We have the, uh, the flight deck here. And we have some more down here on the bottom that breaks up the, the, the red. Uh, but more gray metal here, uh, more gray here, and the rest is it's black. And then you have this side. Underneath it kind of looks like this. We have more yellow. We have the feet sticking out on the bottom, which is fine. We have these two yellow things here. We have the yellow on the lower legs, uh, broken up by this black in the middle. So very nice, very nice. Now in this mode, he is about maybe 15 inches in length. In robot mode, he was 13 inches in length. Uh, somewhere around here, he's about five inches and somewhere around here, he's about maybe eight inches or, or a little bit more. To kind of give you uh, some dimensions here. Now you're gonna plug this piece right here back into play. And there you go. So let's get into our comparisons. Here is Masterpiece Prowl. Kind of see how big that is. Let's put them in the back. See how that is. If you want something bigger, let's bring in Grapple, Masterpiece Grapple. Uh, this color is the same color as the color that's on the side of his uh, face and the wings and stuff like that. So you can kind of an idea. If you want something bigger, we have Galaxy Force Prime. Now they share, they share a lot of uh, colors between the two and the theme, uh, which is in this robot mode. But you can kind of see the size there and then we're gonna it's the only way I can do it you can see the, the size comparison there a little bit bigger because of that figurehead that's in the front here it is from the back and this is from the side but what about ships I got you covered. So first, we're going to start small, and we're going to bring in uh, Scourge. Uh, I haven't found a sweep yet in my area, so this is what I got to work with. So, give you a comparison. Let's see. We're going to stand him up. You can you can stand up by itself. Let's bring this up a little bit so we can see. Oops, sorry for the shaky cam. So, bring this back. And this is Scourge on the table. That's how big that is between the two of them. That is what it looks like from the side. 
And that is what it looks like from the front. Let's get somebody else. Here is Cyclonus. Again, you can stand him up. You can kind of see him on the table, how big this figure is. Lay him down. And you got this. This is exactly how the length of it is going to be. And you have the front. Let's see if we can do this with one hand. Uh -oh. You got the front. That's what it looks like there. But if you want to see it with one more character, we can do that. And here is Siege uh, Shockwave in his spaceship mode. I kind of made it look like this uh, to kind of match this one right here. And you can see the difference right here. Just, you got the, the side here. The bridge is a little bit forward. Um, same wing design, but you can say you can change the wing design on uh, on Shockwave if you, if you need to. Uh, the front is different, and then you have this side right here, and then we have the back one last time, and then this to stand him up to see if I can get this to stand up. That's what that looks like if he's standing up against him. So yeah. Now, he does have visible head syndrome here. I wish there was a piece of plastic they could have gave us to clip on to these nubs that are actually back here. They could have just gave us an extra piece back there. Um, but it's a nice sizable vehicle. I think this is the best mode uh, of the figure. Now, we're going to go back into the robot mode. And we're going to finish up. So to do that, we need to get this piece out of here. So right. So we're going to start with that small piece. And it's very easy to do this. Just bring this all the way back. Bring the head down. Close the mouth. Uh, we need to rotate the top portion this way. Bring this piece down. And you have your chest piece ready to go. Take the wings on the ship. Flip them down. Flip them down, do the same thing underneath, flip them down, flip them down, like that. You take the backpack, you want to unpeg it, uh, bring this up like so. You want to bring this piece right here, you want to bring this up, but before we do, we're going to take these pieces, you know, flip these down. Bring this up. And that's going to peg into place. This piece is going to flip up like this on this armature here. And that's going to plug in now. Take the engines. You tap up. So, take the engines. Bring those up. Take this piece right here. You want to just pull this off. Separate at the legs. For some reason, it won't collapse. Uh, we'll get to that in a second. Take the feet. You want to bring the feet out like this. Bring the feet out like this. Now I want to close. 
bring the arms out. So all the way out there, hold on to this piece right here, bring it down that, bring it on the shoulder. Before you get all the way down, you can bring down the hand, like so. Do the same thing, bring it up, the arm all the way out. Hold this piece right here on the shoulder, you bring this down. And then you bring it down on the, uh, the outer shoulder, if it will. These pieces right here, they fold up like so, like so. Go in here, you get the, the head. If you don't have enough room, you can just bring this down and you flip the head out like so. You got to fix this backpack real quick. And we're almost there, we're almost there. I'm trying to make it look nice. Oops, that's way too much. There we go. You take your shield and sword, you want to separate it that we're gonna put it on this side now these pieces right here you can have them down I forgot to mention you can bring this down if you want now we're gonna put our, our, our shield in Gonna look like that. Take your sword, you can put it on this side if you want to, or vice versa. And last but not least, you're gonna take this piece. And that's going to clip into the the chest. So we have the uh, male friction clip here, and you have the female on that side. That's it. And that is it. That is it. You have your universe. Uh, Commander Universe figure back into his robot mode. So let's bring in his buddies real quick. First, we're going to start off with Shuttle. Put him in the back. Next, we are going to bring in uh, Monster. You can go on that side. And last not least, we're gonna bring in the captain. So we go. Uh which is speed. And that's uh, about it. So if you enjoyed this video, uh please give it a like, subscribe to the channel. If you have any questions, comments, you can put them in the comment section. Uh and I do respond to them sometimes if I see them. Um, other than that, so we have one more figure coming in the mail. I'm not exactly sure we're going to get into it. So I hope you enjoyed this video on the Tobot Galaxy Detectives Commander Universe. He will be back in the next video. So I'm going to check you ladies and gents out. So thank you for watching.